Flareon, the physical attacking fire type evolution, had no strong physical fire moves at first. This was changed in Gen 6, when it finally got access to Flare Blitz. Gengar for the first 6 generations had the ability Levitate, losing its ground type weakness, making it pretty annoying to deal with, until Gen 7, where it lost Levitate completely, getting Cursed Body instead. Blaziken at first was considered the worst version of Infernape, having good offences, but slower, making it less useful. Black and White 2 however introduced hidden abilities, and Blaziken's happened to be Speed Boost. This single-handedly made Blaziken one of the best Pokemon in singles, even better than most legendaries. In Gen 6, Will-O-Wisp's accuracy was changed from 75 to 85. Some people reckon this is due to the 2013 World Championships, where Aaron Zhang missed 5 Will-O-Wisps in a row. Ouch. Everyone who thinks of the move Water Shuriken thinks of one Pokemon, Greninja. Well, not only was Water Shuriken changed from being a physical move to a special move in Gen 7, Water Shuriken was also changed from being Greninja's signature move to a Selgors, since the Selgor is technically the only Pokemon that can learn Water Shuriken in Generation 8. Raichu is the superior version of Pikachu, according to its stats, until Light Ball was introduced in Gen 2. At first it only increased Pikachu's special attack, but in Gen 4, it doubled both Pikachu's attack stats, making it much scarier threat to deal with than its own evolution. Davin and Pearl are known for being some of the slowest Pokemon games ever. This speed was improved a bit in Platinum, where there is a notable difference. Before Gen 4, attacking moves were split up between physical and special, depending on their type. For example, all fire moves were special, and all fighting moves were physical, meaning you'd probably see some special attacking Pokemon like Gardevoir using moves like Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and Thunder Punch, which of course are now physical moves. Leech Life was known for being that annoying move that every Zubat knew. It was terrible, but annoying. That is until Generation 7, where its power was increased from 20 to 80, going from one of the worst bug moves to one of the best. Rotom's many forms have many different types, but this wasn't always the case in Gen 4. Rotom was Electric Ghost no matter what form it looked like. Adding the extra types was a much better idea. Did you know that Chandelure once had Shadow Tag as its hidden ability? Back in Gen 5, this broken ability was one of the reasons why Chandelure was so powerful, until it was replaced in Gen 6 with Infiltrator, making it a lot less scary. The name filter system in Pokemon prevents players from naming Pokemon naughty words, and used to be a lot stricter. So strict that in Gen 5, you couldn't even trade a Kofagrigus online without changing its name, since it contained an unfortunate bad word. Luckily, this was changed a generation later. The pronunciation of this Pokemon originally was Arceus, however was changed to Arceus, probably due to the R sound it made. This pronunciation was made even more official, given the RKS system introduced in Gen 7. Charizard may seem like a strong Pokemon, but it was actually considered one of the weaker competitive choices, barely being used by anyone in singles or doubles. That is, until Mega Evolution was introduced, where it became one of the strongest Pokemon that you could use, in either singles or doubles. Similar things happened to other Pokemon, like Mawal and Kangaskhan. Combuskin's shiny form changed in Gen 8, from being hardly noticeable, to the orange parts turning bright red. Hopefully Game Freak continues to fix other terrible shinies in the future. Before gender differences were introduced, most Pokemon that were male or female looked the exact same, but when they were introduced, Pokemon like Butterfree gained some slight differences, with marks on the wings being added for female Butterfrees. This was later added in the I Choose You movie, as well as Mystery Dungeon, making it very clear that this Butterfree is indeed female. Decidueye was originally planned to be in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, however Sakurai ultimately decided to go with Incineroar. Wise choice in my opinion. There are certain Pokemon that were originally designed a certain way, but then were slightly changed upon the release of their game. Some notable examples being Torchic, Gastrodon, and the Legendary Beasts. The move Thunder Wave was originally pretty unbalanced, not only having 100% accuracy, but also being able to hit any Pokemon outside of ground types. It didn't help that a paralyzed Pokemon speed was cut by 75%. Eventually, Electric types became immune to paralysis, as well as Thunder Wave's accuracy being cut to 90%, along with paralysis speed not being as strict dropping from 75% to 50% instead. In 2020, Pokemon made a Pokemon of the Year poll, where people could vote on their favourite Pokemon. The top picks were pretty unsurprising, with Greninja winning the poll, followed by Pokemon like Lucario and Charizard, etc. 
The following year, another Pokemon of the Year poll was hosted in Japan, and the results were very, very different, with almost the entire top half of the list completely changing. Dedenne was the number one most voted Pokemon, followed by Chinchino, Sableye, Snivy, Magnemite, and Swadloon of all Pokemon. I don't think anyone would have guessed these results. Hyper Potions were one of the best healing items in the game, healing 200 HP. Just two Hyper Potions would fully heal almost any level 100 Pokemon. This was nerfed in Gen 7, where it only healed 120 HP instead, which was a pretty big deal. On the plus side, Super Potions were buffed, from healing 50 HP to 60 HP. Since Gen 5, Elgium and Behium have been able to learn the TM for Steel Wing, which always seemed quite odd, given their lack of wings. People speculated this was due to Steel Wing being TM51, relating to Area 51, since Elgium and Behium may be based on Area 51 alien conspiracy theories. However, not only is Steel Wing not TM51 anymore, being TM47 from Gen 2 to 4, and TM13 Gen 8, Elgium and Behium can't even learn TM51 in the current generation. They still can learn Steel Wing though. Dark Void was one of the most broken Pokemon moves in past generations, being able to put both opponents to sleep with 80% accuracy. The move was so dominant in VGC, with people running Smurgle just to spam it, that in the next generation, it was changed quite a bit, not only having its accuracy lowered to 50%, but Smurgle, while still being able to learn Dark Void, can't use it. This seemed pretty harsh, as stopping Smurgle from using the move would have been enough, but eventually in Legends Arceus the accuracy was raised to 90%. In Generation 1, if the player used the move Raw or Whirlwind against another trainer's Pokemon, it would always fail, only being able to use it against wild Pokemon. This was changed in the next generation, where players were able to use this move against opponent's Pokemon. Critical hits in Generation 1 were based on the Pokemon's speed. This led to some interesting yet broken strategies, with fast Pokemon like Persian being able to take huge advantage of this. Using a move with a high crit chance, like Slash, meant that the chance of Persian critting with it was 255 out of 256, or 99.6%. Crits were then changed to a 6.25% chance of happening, regardless of the Pokemon speeds, dealing double damage from Gens 2 to 5, and then changing to 50% more damage in Gen 6. Breeding Pokemon for perfect stats and IVs was made much easier over the years. At first, the Everstone only had a chance to pass down the parent's nature. This was then changed in Gen 6, where Everstone had an 100% chance to pass down the nature, as well as Destiny Nut, guaranteeing at least 5 IVs of the parents also. A number of Pokemon had their stats changed between generations. On the one hand, Asia Slash was so strong that in Gen 8, it had its 150 stats, depending on its attack or defense, reduced by 10. On the other hand, Raichu had a speed increase from 100 to 110 in Gen 6. Now you might think 10 points of speed isn't much, but there is a reason why regular Garchomp is considered superior to its own Mega. Another Pokemon stat that was altered was Alakazam's. However, this is a bit more complicated than the others. Its special defense was increased by 10 points in Gen 6, the same generation that Alakazam received its Mega Evolution. Now when the Pokemon Mega revolves, its stat total is always increased by 100, except for Alakazam, whose stats only increased by 90. This was likely due to its regular form receiving 10 additional special defense points in the same generation. This was then fixed in Gen 7, where the Mega gained an additional 10 special defense points as well. Gale Wings was considered one of the best abilities in Gen 6, giving priority to any flying tag move, and making Talonflame a staple on a lot of teams, giving it the strongest priority move in the game, being Brave Bird. And since this ability was so busted, Gale Wings was eventually changed, where the user only had priority of flying type moves at full health, making moves like Brave Bird a bit less useful. The move Fence is a damaging attack that went through Protect and Detect. However, in Gen 4, it could only damage the opponent if they used Protect or Detect, making it very situational and hard to use. In Gen 5 onwards, Fent now hits the Pokemon regardless of Protect or Detect although its power was also decreased from 50 to 30. Freeze at one point was the most unfair status in the game, permanently stopping the opponent that could only use an ice heal or get hit by a fire move to thaw out. The chance of the Pokemon thawing out by itself was changed to 10%, eventually to 20%. However, in Legends Arceus, Freeze was scrapped completely for Frostbite, 
which acted similar to burn, where it damaged the opponent over time, and lowering their special attack instead of physical attack. This was a much better, more balanced idea. In the Mystery Dungeon games, the player had the option to use a regular attack. This was weaker than their actual attacks, however it didn't use any PP. In the remake, however, there is no regular attack option, and the player is forced to use their actual attacks. The Steel type is known for having the most resistances of any type, and before Generation 6, it had even more resistances, resisting both Dark and Ghost type. It lost these resistances in Gen 6, and probably for the best. After the Fairy type was introduced, there were some Pokemon like Clefairy that were originally normal type that were weak to the fighting type. However, after gaining the Fairy type, this weakness has now become a resistance. The wallpaper in the player's room in Diamond and Pearl had these notable little lines through them. Apparently, these lines weren't supposed to be there, and was just due to the graphics of the game being changed into the game so there weren't any lines. However, in the remake, they brought them back, not as a graphical error, but for aesthetic which is a pretty good attention to detail. The move wrap is not very good and nothing special, but in Gen 1, it was one of the most broken moves in the game, as when the players used wrap against the opponents, they could be stuck in wrap indefinitely, and if the Pokemon was faster than the opponents, well, you could just say that they were screwed. While wrap was broken, there were other moves like Focus Energy, another move that was eventually fixed, not for being too broken, but because it didn't work properly. It was supposed to increase the user's crit ratio, but instead it lowered it, making the move even worse than useless. Jinx had a very questionable original design, so much so that its colours were changed to purple. Mm, for the best, definitely. Some sprite designs of Pokemon were pretty hard to make out, or just straight up wrong. The symbol on coughing was in completely the wrong place, and there were some sprites like Machamp that was missing their iconic belt. Hehe, <laughs> this gym is great, it's full of women. Hehe, <laughs> this gym is great, it's full of strong trainers. Yeah, I can see why this was changed. The game corner was a staple of early Pokemon games. However, to make sure that Pokemon would remain a game rated for any ages to play, they were removed, either replaced with something else or nothing at all. This is why early Pokemon games on the eShop were rated 12, containing gambling. Some original designs of Pokemon only lasted a gen or two. Charmander had a spike on its back, Lapras had fangs, Kakuna looked like it had arms. Like I said, they only lasted a gen or two. Another change I only just noticed was Dratini. Did you know that it used to have stripes on its front? Not anymore, but they were definitely there. Klefki's signature move Fairy Lock was notorious in Gen 8. At first, when it was used in Sword and Shield, while animations were enabled, it would completely crash the game, making it unusable. Luckily, this was fixed in a later patch. Kadabra is probably one of the rarest Pokemon cards in the TCG. As magician Yuri Geller was convinced that Kadabra was a parody of him, and thus Kadabra cards weren't allowed to be imprinted. That is, until 2020, where he had a miraculous change of heart, and allowed Kadabra to be printed again. Lapras' early deck centuries talked about how it was an endangered species, and close to extinction. Because of this, someone took it upon themselves to breed Lapras and release them in the wild to try and repopulate the Pokémon. You'd think this wouldn't work. However, in newer game Pokédex entries, it says that there's all of a sudden an abundance of Lapras. So, good job dude. You single-handedly saved an entire Pokémon species. Did you know that some Pokémon were intended to be released in a certain generation? but were delayed a bit. The Gastrodon line, for example, was planned for the Gen 3 games, but were released in Gen 4 instead. Pokemon weren't the only designs to change. Original sprites for some Rocket Grunts and Sabrina showed them holding whips. These were eventually altered, and the whips were removed. I definitely see why. Everyone remembers Tracy replacing Brock in the anime for a bit. Apparently this was done because they thought Brock may have come across racist to American audiences. He eventually came back when they figured out that wasn't the case. And finally, Gold, Silver and Crystal were plans to be the last Pokemon games in the series, which is probably the main reason why Gold, Silver and Crystal were the only games to contain multiple regions, as like the game's big finale. But due to Pokemon's immense popularity, it continued on today, with the ninth generation as well as future gens on their way.